Hi, uh, in this video, we are going to explain how to plot a continuous time signal. And in this example, we have the signal x of t, and uh, it's defined over three interval when t less than zero, t between zero and two, and t greater than the m2. Uh, let's just uh, go ahead and start to uh, figure out how it's sketched before we, we write the code in uh, MATLAB. Uh, the first interval when t less than zero, it's equal to constant, which is negative one. So that's here, uh, that's t equal zero and extend it up to negative infinity, just to sketch it uh, uh, over the interval zero, negative three, because uh, there is a condition here in the in this question, it said plot x of t against time t over the time interval negative three, t greater than negative three, less than four. It means that should be between negative three and four, so that's why I'm going to start the first interval from negative three up to zero. Well, t less than zero is equal to negative one, and we do a straight line equal to negative one. And uh, for the second interval between zero and two, it's a straight line three t negative one. How you uh, calculate this uh, uh, straight line? Substitute by the two endpoints. One time you put t equal zero, so when you put t equal zero, three times zero is equal zero minus one will be negative one. That's the first point negative one at t equal zero. When t is equal to, you substitute by t equal to, you have three times negative two, uh, uh, three times two is equal six, six minus one is equal five. So when t is equal to, you go up to five and put the point and you connect. All right. Then when t is greater than two, it will be constant value equal five and then just do five. And I stop at t equal four because it's a condition here in this question. Now, how can I sketch this function or this signal? Consignal? Well, let's just go to MATLAB. First thing you do, uh, you will just uh, uh, write a comment to remind yourself what you're going to do. Say plotting a continuous time signal. Uh, um, all right. And uh, then after that, you save the file before you start write, uh, write anything. So you, you make sure that uh, I, I have an old version of MATLAB. Maybe you, you will have the front of phase, but the same thing. You go save as and just you call it. For example, plot continuous time signal, and you can give it one because maybe you are going to do many files continuous time signal. So okay, you save it. Now, what you're going to do next? First of all, it's very important to write uh, the following uh, commands or column functions. You say close uh, all, close any file put there, and clear all semicolon and clc and you clf clf is just clear all uh, figures so when you start so fresh and if there's something in the memory it will not disturb your new calculation always just bought this line just to be safe side when you run the program every time now we remember that we have three intervals let me just remind you let's go here to the slide okay the first interval it's between negative three and zero negative three and zero all right so you will say t1 that's the first interval equal to negative three and uh, up to zero well i left space here what is that that's the steps you are going to use what is the size of each step you want to calculate i advise you when you do the continuous time signal make it 0 0.01 Sometimes will be point, point 0.1 will work, but point zero 0.01 it's good so you can get smooth line and continuous time signal. You want to calculate every single point zero 0.01 second, so it will be smooth straight line. All right, what is the function? Call it x1. So what's x1? x1 is the corresponding value to this interval t1. Uh, we know that's equal to, just let's refresh our memory, it's equal to negative 1. So how you write equal negative 1? All right. There is something very important. There is a function called once. Once. This once, it, uh, uh, it gives only one, 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 just the value of one. And for uh, how many elements in it? It should be the same number of the elements of T1. So how we find the size of it? Well, let me just make another command. Say N is equal size of T1. Don't forget the semicolon. So what does it mean? And it means how many elements in this vector t1 n will be. So when you do the ones, the size of ones will be n uh, n on. All right. 
and just I, I didn't finish the program but I want to show you something in the command here just let me run the program all right and I'm going to show you n you see what you got in n is one it means one row and 301 colon all right so that's the size of uh, uh, t1 because n is equal to t1 it gives you the size that's the number of rows number of columns and now we are sure x1 will have the same size and all ones well let's go ahead and type x1 I'll show you what is x1 look ones ones ones, ones. how many you see i mean there are many start from column one up to column three zero one the same size all right now let's clear everything see see okay now we understand why the, but hey come on it's not only ones we said that it should be equal to a negative one it's negative one all right that's not big deal you did the ones just multiply here by negative one negative one times ones you know now it's all negative ones okay you don't believe me right okay just go there I run the program, so write x1. All right, negative one, negative one. Okay, by the same size. All right, good. Now you believe me. Clear everything. Well, let's now move to the second interval. What's the second interval? Second interval from zero to two. From zero to two, all right? So say t2 is equal from zero, and the step is 0 0.01 up to two. Semicolon. All right, uh, so, oh, that's not should be equal so that's the interval second interval what is the function x2 uh, I forgot it. the function or the signal 3t minus 1 that's easy that's easy to, to type 3 times t what's t not in t t2 minus 1 semicolon well somebody said okay you didn't use size here why well because uh, this is a function of t2 so whatever the t2 every single value of t2 will come in this equation calculated so i don't know about it but here i want to work because just once it is no relation i got to relate it to uh, t1 through the size all right now finish t2 let's go for t3 i want to know that turbul why i always write plus okay i hit shift that's t3 greater than 2 but already is given i shouldn't exceed 4 so it's from 2 to 4 2 to 4 all right i'll write from 2 up to 4 and i observe i use also 0.01 that's right all right what is the function x3 it was equal to 5 so i write the same thing it's just like like this one exactly exactly but oh now we have two sides the size of t3 different than this one you can use the same you cannot use this one n so to make it just this is n1 corresponding to t1 just distinction between both and now i'm going to find the size n2 it's the size of t3 good and now x3 if you write once and the size of ones n three you will be good but that's once what is the value of x3 in this example um it's equal five okay just you go what you'll do okay i can hear you yeah, by, by, by five yeah now we, okay now you have the old values of t1 t2 t3 and x1 x2 x3 how you plot them they are discrete no well you collect them in one vector the old time so you have t1 you can make a space or comma if you like t2 t3 that will collect the all time intervals only in one interval called t and about x you just call x and in the same order x1 x2 x3 you are ready now what you'll do plot use plot when you do the continuous time signal t x and now we are going to get it. Don't put semicolon here. We don't have to. So let's just run the program, see if we have any error to fix it. And then you see that graph. Oh, you see, you have you have errors in one, five times ones, in three, uh, in three. Oh, oh, undefined. Oh, yeah, you see, that's a big mistake. And it should be in three. Because when it comes in in three, what is in three? It was in two. All right let's just run the program again hopefully that was the only error yes yes when he went into the graph okay you got to look for the second all right what, 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 
Yes, I got it to another meter. All right. Here you go. You see, that's I mean that negative one, and then the straight line up to five. But you see, it's just it's not. As you know, you cannot see it. What you do that? How can you do that? What do you mean I can see it? Somebody say that. No, this one stick to the end. What about if I make the uh, this vertical distance bigger than the scale or uh, the range of the my graph here? That start from negative one up to five. I'll increase it by one. Uh, I'll make my limit from negative two up to six. All right. And also make grid. Just try type grid. What you do when you have grid? It will be a little bit clear. Let me check. All right. Yes. You see a little bit clear. Now I st I just want to see this line. At negative one i want to see this line well let's just uh what we'll do we'll say uh x limit x limit and how you write x limit you have two bracket like that and then the limit should be put on a vector like that and then go inside this square bracket uh i want to sketch from i want to show you i mean here the, how can i define that from negative three to four add one here will be negative four from the left and five negative four five that's my excellent negative four to five so i leave a space i can see that's excellent for y limit i make the same thing why i'm doing oh that's wrong see x limit i open this bracket and then inside this this bracket i make the square bracket and then the square bracket inside i will put the limit as you know that y uh, change from negative one up to five you see here we can see it clear so I, I i make it from negative two up to six negative two up to six that's excellent negative two up to six now it will be clear let's see if i succeed to make it clear here let's run the program here all right here you go let me make a picture of you. Okay, now we can see it, right? Because you left space here, so here you can see it. Well, uh, but the line, they are so skinny. Well, how you can make it bigger, like, uh, or thick? You should make it like that. And then write line width. And choose size 2 would be good. And you can, you, know, you can change also the color, but it's okay. Let me see if I did it in the right format. All right, no error. That's good. Here you go. That's your graph. Okay, that's clear. That's excellent. Well, let's just get a little bit fancy. Let's call x label the like time and y a vertical called x of t, for example. All right, let's just do that. So how we do that? That's x label. Uh, then you write uh, time t. Or you can say time uh, in the unit second. I'd like to write only t and second. And you don't forget to put this. Uh, all right. That's the x label, y label. Y label that will be, uh, let's say, we call it x of t. That's what we're doing. Oh, forgot to uh, have to do that. See, so now it turns blue. All right. Let's just run and see if I did any error. No error. All right. Let's see now how it looks. Okay. That's excellent. So, um, and remember, if when you do your report, you don't take screenshot. There is a function called um, copy figure. Let me show you copy figure. I'm going to open like a, a Word file from my desktop. I go there and I will open Word file. Let's show you how when you copy and paste here. All right, the new one. And now we just go for insert. No, just you go for paste. That's all. Just click this. So this started. Ah, here you go. You see, you get a nice one. Don't make screenshot. Always do that. Copy forgot thing. I think that's it. And next time I'm going to show you a video how to do the screen. If you have any questions, just put it in the discussion forum. All right. I think we are done. Thank you.